The Corvette's going electric. Apple releases their electrifying little Waffle House of processors. And you, the last thing, AMP, AMD gets really good affordable. They, they should have had this at launch. I did great on that intro, everybody. Let's get into the hot news. I'm your Brett host. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. And we're going to be talking about a little bit of rumors that are coming out, leaks, if you will, things that probably shouldn't be disclosed. Galax showing that the RTX 4070 is real, showing boxes that they shouldn't have posted it on the internet, but now you know that NVIDIA is going to release a 4070, not just the 4070 Ti. Big shocker there. What's also going to shock your system is getting your faster Intel GPUs because in case you want to overclock those bad boys, they don't have support in MSI Afterburner. They also don't really uh, have a whole lot of functionality in Intel's own first party Arc Control app. So an Asus overclocker of Shimino went ahead and developed their own tool called the Arc OC tool, which allows you to get more customizability and pushing those little blue GPUs to their limits in case you want to go as fast as possible, which like this is an interesting subsect of computer gamers. Number one, people who have Intel GPUs. Then number two, people who care so much about pushing their hardware that they want to do that with a custom tool and not just what's provided them on the easy stuff. And then fusing that together to come into the circle of like, just who, who is this for? How many people gonna use this? I, I would like to find out. It's interesting. Even though it is made by an Asus overclocker, it's not just for Asus GPUs. Any Intel Arc GPU should work on it in case you want to make it go zoom. And you know what didn't zoom too high today? Crypto stocks, Bitcoin down just to, it's up. Oh, it's up and it's down. I don't know what's going on. It's 213019. I read that number correctly. 1582 for Ethereum, which is down and Dogecoin also down to be at 8.3 cents. Tesla having a fantastic day being up 7.3 percent on the day but turns out that elon musk might not be having a fantastic day because it didn't include the article which talks about how the 1.5 billion dollar loan uh interest payment that he has to service is coming due in the next few days and he has to sell a whole lot of stock for that reason but additionally twitter uh confirming at least allegedly what we talked about in yesterday's hot news that they were breaking the api to third-party twitter apps and not really saying anything about it and some people were alleging that this was intentional on twitter's part and twitter confirming that by saying that Twitter is enforcing its long-standing API rules that may result in some apps not working, which is both direct and vague and just exactly what I would expect out of an Elon Musk company. And you know what I expect out of Reese? Deals today, boy. Please, sir. I can, I need more deals. You didn't give me any yesterday. I need them today. Reese, where are the deals? Hey, welcome back to UFT Deals. We bring the hottest tech deals on the internet. I know, I know I missed the deals yesterday. I had some of you guys roasting me in the Discord for it, which by the way, you should join our Discord. We actually have a dedicated deals channel there. So you can see the deals as they get posted so you don't miss out in case the hot news episode goes live and the deals are done already. It's happened a few times recently, actually. <laughs> I can't control where the deals end, but I can present some cool deals to you guys. Starting with this Intel Core i7 12700K. This 12 core CPU with its eight performance cores and four efficiency cores, which clock up to five gigahertz, is going for only $298.99, which is $121 off. But then if you're team red and you still need those 12 cores, the Ryzen 9 5900X is currently going for only $349, which is $200 off. And then lastly, my favorite budget pick for monitor, it's the one I actually have right Right here is the LG 27 inch 4K IPS display with FreeSync and HDR support going for only $199.99 which is $200 off. I like to think of it as the best of the budget which is exactly what I'm drawn to. And like always don't forget you can find the links to these deals and more in the video description down below. But until then I'm gonna hand you off back to Brad for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. But I know I can't get this one deal from Reese no matter how much I beg him and that is for a Corvette. It's my dream car. I want one one day if I could potentially make it happen I would love it. And they just unveiled the first hybrid Corvette known as the Corvette E-Ray, which is also getting an all-wheel drive setup, which just, I want this so badly, okay? It's still gonna have a gas engine, hence the hybrid setup, which is the naturally aspirated V8 that you can find in the current ones. Look at that badging on the E-Ray, I love it so much. It's gonna produce a total of 655 horsepower and 595 foot-pounds of torque, which is almost as good as the Z06, but not quite there. So it's gonna be better than the base VET, but it's not gonna be quite to the top line. However, it will beat the Z06 in a zero to 60 drag race going at 2.5 seconds versus the Z06 2.6 seconds. However, the E-Ray will be slightly slower when it comes to the quarter mile. I just know that I, I want one. I want one so badly, okay? It's based on the C8 and it's probably gonna cost a lot of money. And I have children and I have employees and 
if I just fired everybody and scaled down my operation and just tried to make as much profit as possible, I maybe could afford it. Kyler, what? can I replace you with a Corvette? What? Can I replace you with the Corvette? Are you looking up pictures of the green M&M again? Hi. The one with the breast pump? Yeah. Kyler. <laughs> Disgusting, disgusting man. You know what's disgusting is the specs that Apple's putting into the new MacBook Pros with them finally unveiling the M2 Pro and M2 Max chips, just like we talked about was rumored for it to happen. It actually did come out and you can see that it's they're faster. So you got the 14 and 16 inch like you had in the previous generation, but the M2 Pro is gonna be about 20% faster than the M1 Pro when it comes to the CPU and also gonna be faster in the GPU and neural engine, the M2 Max is gonna be huge with up to 96 gigabytes of total support and 30% faster graphics than the M1 Max chip, as well as the neural engine gonna be 40% faster than the previous generation. It's also gonna have a whole bunch of new things like Wi-Fi 6E, it's gonna have 8K 60 hertz support as well as 4K 240 hertz support, three Thunderbolt 4 ports, SD card slot, MagSafe 3 charging. It's gonna be uh, what seems to be just a good update to the previous generation, but at a price point that is very similar to what it was on the M1 Pro and M1 Max. So if you want the latest and greatest and you were considering the previous gen, the new gen's looking good too. The Mac Mini also getting an update to the M2 or M2 Pro chips, up to 24 gigabytes of unified memory. However, it can't do as many displays as the previous. If you get the M2, you can't you can't do high refresh rate or more than like it's it's complicated it's not as good to get the m2 versus the m2 pro and the mac mini which makes a lot of sense the only the only little thing that besides you know apple charges a ridiculous amount of storage if you try to get up to eight terabytes they j jack it up by like eight thousand dollars it's ridiculous it's absurd it's, it's very expensive for the storage and ram upgrades the ram upgrades i understand a little bit because it's actually a different physical die since it's unified memory but the thing that bothers me the most about the new MacBooks is that if you go to the website and you want to choose the mid-tier option, okay, you got a 10-core CPU and a 16-core GPU, but then on the mid-tier, you got a 12-core CPU and a 19-core GPU? 19 cores? What is that? I don't, I don't like it. I don't want a prime number in my math. I don't like it at all. Brett's, Brett's negatively affected by 19 GPU cores, okay? Let me know if you're interested in the new Apple laptops down below in the comments while well, I'm gonna tell you about the things that I think most people are interested in when it comes to the new AMD setup. One of the biggest complaints that we've been hearing about Ryzen 7000 is the fact that the motherboard pricing is just too expensive. B650 was supposed to be the affordable option and they came in at a minimum of like $175 at launch and they might be slightly cheaper now, but they're still very, very expensive, making the total platform upgrade very costly to anybody who's been considering it. But now we've got more details on A620 coming out, which could hopefully make it more reasonable for the base level upgrade package, which hopefully it makes good on AMD's promise that these motherboards should start at $125 because that's what they said when they launched AM5 and then that's never actually happened. So there's EEC filings of both Gigabyte and Asus motherboards, which typically means that these motherboards will likely be around the corner, hopefully launching roughly the same time as the X3D chips in February. So you're probably likely to get fewer PCI Express lanes. You likely will also lose overclocking, which I don't think is a big deal for many of the mainstream consumers of AMD's chips. You also will not have PCI Express 5.0, which is again, totally fine since there's no SSDs out that support it, nor are there any GPUs that support it. So it's kind of a non necessary thing for most people. So if we do end up getting a 620 motherboards at 125, you add in a 7600, which is the cheapest new AMD processor, plus getting like 16 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM for $69. That puts you at roughly $300 for the CPU and RAM. You add in 120, you're at 425 as an upgrade package, as opposed to the close to 650 that it was when the 7600X launched. So that's a decent knockdown, but still makes it very expensive for anybody to consider getting into the new generation of AMD chips. A620 launching pretty late. I think 
I, I just, I don't really understand AMD's strategy with their CPUs this generation. The X variants that they launched, nobody really liked them. They cut down the prices really heavily. Then they came out with the non-X variants and those are reviewing really well, but then st people are still waiting for the X3D chips, but then they're not giving us a 7600 X3D. We're just getting the 7800 X3D. And it just, it's all in a position where I don't know if AMD is really trying to convince people to upgrade at this point or if they're just they're just saying hey we'll catch people with am5 on the 8 8000 series because i i don't know what do you think will will 125 dollars stripped down motherboards help to incentivize you to switch over to amd i want to hear from you down below in the comments while you hear the sound of the next youtube video you're going to watch because this one's over see you in that one maybe as long as you watch like previous hot news or something i don't know don't abandon me, please.